Well, in the district, the D.C. Council approved the new controversial crime bill today, overriding Mayor Muriel Bowser's veto. Fox 5's Katie Barlow joining us live now from downtown D.C. with the details. So, Katie, what happens next? Where do we go from here? Well, good evening, Angie. As with all bills in Washington, D.C., they go to Congress for a review first. This one will get 60 days of review in Congress before becoming final. But just moments ago, we actually got a statement from Mayor Muriel Bowser uh, commending the criminal code reform for aiming to right historic wrongs, but actually saying that it misses the moment and falls short and that it has undebated and unvetted policies and that actually she plans to submit some updates and changes to the revised criminal code and submit those to the council in the next 30 days. We also heard similar things from council member Brooke Pinto, who said she plans to submit some updates that would expand gun related uh, penalties and restrictions in the revised criminal code. Again, a reminder, the code doesn't uh, go to go into effect until 2025, so there is time for the council to take up the mayor's proposal and council member Pinto's proposal, among others. Now, take a look at what the D.C. Police, police Union said today as well. They actually agree with the sentiment of what Mayor Bowser said in her statement in a sharply worded statement from the chief. Um, shortly after the council vote this afternoon, Union Chief Greg Pemberton called the council reprehensible for the vote today and points out that D.C. has now had two back-to-back -back years with over 200 homicides for the first time in 20 years. But today, council members said the crimi current criminal code is actually the problem. Our current criminal code is making us less safe today. It is consistently ranked as one of the worst criminal codes in the country. The current criminal code is unfair to D.C. residents. It makes it hard to hold bad actors accountable, and it is not working to create a safer city. So here's an example of something that's different in the old and the new code. We're, we're going to look at robbery. Under the old code, robbery was subject to a minimum of two years in prison, a maximum of 15 years. But there was no separation, no gradation, no first degree, second degree, third degree robbery. So pickpocketing could be treated the same as a more aggressive robbery. Now, under the new code, uh, there are penalties for enhancements with a firearm, and armed robbery faces a maximum penalty of up to 20 years. Now, Janu Park, who is heading up the Criminal Code Reform Commission, says that that maximum of 20 years is more than double what they're seeing judges impose, even the highest penalties on armed robbery offenses here in the district, which sits at about nine years. However, it does eliminate that mandatory minimum two-year penalty, and the revised criminal code actually gets rid of all mandatory minimums except for first-degree murder. Back to you guys. Thanks, Katie. And it brings us to our Fox 5 Instable question right now. Who benefits from softer penalties for violent crimes? Take a look. We had a couple ways that you could answer. And it looks like overwhelmingly, nearly 97% of people who have weighed in so far have said that the criminals are the main benefactors of softer penalties for violent crimes. But you can still, of course, cast your vote. Just scan that QR code right there um, on your phone. You can also go to our Fox 5 DC app or fox5dc.com.